This is fairly typical epidote. The epidote is almost all of this field of view. High relief, very high relief. Not quite as high as the titanite, which are the little brown grains in there. Um, but what's distinctive, other than the high relief, is when you cross the polars, you get a, just a wide array of colors. This distinctive lemon yellow and this sort of anomalous royal blue color. Um, but then also really intense colors. I, I tell my students it's like magic markers. Sometimes epidote is distinctly yellow or sort of a yellowish green in thin section. That's what this epidote uh, is. Uh, and again, when you cross the polars, you get this really interesting array of uh, interference colors. It's super intense. I like this epidote uh, because it has that really distinctive interference color. So if you look at those, those central grains, um, high relief, uh, when you cross the polars, you get this lemon yellow and sort of sky blue to slightly darker blue um, interference color. It's a little bit zoned, which is probably meaning that it's uh, chemically zoned, uh, but that's really characteristic of epidote. Most epidote that you see has a fairly high ferric iron content, and that's one of the reasons it has this intense uh, interference colors, or the blue and, and yellow. But if there's a very low ferric iron content, so it's actually either clinozoocyte or zoocyte, the interference colors are gray. And that's what you're seeing here. It's very hard to tell the difference between clinozoocyte and orthorhombic zoocyte, but clinozoocyte has very slightly inclined extinction, and zoocyte has parallel extinction. This is, I think, zoocyte. You'll see that when the polars are crossed, it has that same kind of gray uh, interference colors. Um, there's a little bit of modeling to it, and you typically see that in these sorts of um, in in these sorts of crystals. There's probably some chemical zoning, and it could be in lots of different things. It could be in ferric iron or rare earth elements or something like that. Alanite is a rare earth element epidote, so lanthanides plus scandium and yttrium. Uh, like all epidote group minerals, has high relief. Here, it's actually just the pleochroic brown core that's the alanite. And when I cross the polars, you'll see that the outer edge is this sort of slightly anomalous blue interference color epidote. So it's just the core is alanite and the rim is epidote. That's typically what you see in igneous alanites. And then here is a metamorphic um, alanite. So it, that sort of cloudy core in that central high relief grain is the alanite. When I cross the polars, you'll see the anomalous blue interference colors of the uh, epidote that's around the outside. So there you see it. In some metamorphic rocks, the alanite just looks like a little fuzzball. And you have to go to high magnification to really verify that it's alanite. So here's a high uh, magnification image of a metamorphic alanite. The alanite is that brown pleochroic core, um, a little bit off center of the high relief grain. And then when I cross the polars, you're going to see those really intense magic marker type uh, interference colors of the surrounding epidote. I love this crystal. This is Piemontite. Piemontite is a manganese bearing uh, epidote. Uh, and you can see there's actually epidote in here that has Piemontite that's grown over it or on the rims. Um, but this is an actual single crystal of, of Piemontite and it shows that uh, distinctive um, pinkish uh, to orange pleochroism. And I, I couldn't resist. So here's epidote with Piemontite overgrowths on it. And you can see that pink to uh, orange pleochroism of the Piemontite, while the epidote really doesn't show much pleochroism at all. Um, and then you can see the different interference colors for the core of the um, epidote is similar to other sorts of epidotes that we've looked at.